In this video, we're going to see how to calculate the vector cross product. And we have uh, vector A, components 5, 2, negative 1. And, well, we have vector A is equal to 5A plus 2J minus K, and vector B, which is negative J plus 4K. So we're using the IJK notation for the vectors. Um, and we'll mix up that notation because it is good to know both. Uh, we want to find the cross product of B cross A. Um, so the I think it's easier to set up this in component form. And so if you don't have the vectors in component form, step one is to write them in component form. Uh, and so vector A is pretty obvious, 5, 2. Uh, but if there's nothing there, right, that is a, a negative 1 or a positive 1. Um, and then with vector B, there is no I piece there. And so the first component is 0. So there's vectors A and B in component form. And we set up a matrix, and the first row of the matrix is these basis vectors, I, J, K. I know, we just got rid of them, right? Um, and then the second row is the uh, first vector that's mentioned. So the cross product's not commutative. The order does matter. And so the one on the left in the cross product will go in the middle row. Uh, which is B, and then the one on the right, which is A, goes as the bottom row. So we set up this little matrix. You can see those components, component forms from step one coming in handy there. And then we want to find the determinant of this matrix. Um, and so if you're not familiar with taking the determinant of a three by three matrix, uh, we'll break that down with the next steps. Um, and the way to do that is to uh, create the two by two minors of the matrix. Um, one way to think about this is, so for the first minor, um, we're using I, we would sort of cross out that row and column, and then that is the two by two minor for i. So we'll write that two by two matrix with the i next to it, but that's how you get it. And then there's a minus built into this formula. Um, there's other ways to do the determinant where you don't have that minus. Um, so you can do it a different way, but uh, if you do it this way, you do need that minus built in there. So just be careful. Some folks get messed up with that. And we're going to do the same thing, but with uh, J. So when we cross out the J row and column, and then that's our two by two minor, zero, four, five, negative one. And then we do the last one, which is k, 0, negative 1, 5, 2. Now we do 2 by 2 determinants. And if you haven't done that before, um, the idea is that you would multiply, I usually do it from the top down, uh, multiply the main diagonal, so top left with bottom right, um, and then you subtract from that the product of the anti-diagonal from the top right to the bottom left. So that would be negative 1 times negative 1 for the main diagonal minus 4 times 2 for the anti-diagonal. Right? And then you do the same thing for the other ones. So this would be 0 times negative 1 minus 4 times 5. 
and then zero times two minus negative one times five. All right, and then I have step five is actually simplifying this, uh, this result. Um, and so if you go down to step five, uh, negative one, negative one is one, four and two is eight. And then zero times negative one is zero minus 20. And then zero times two is zero. Minus a negative five is plus five. Uh, and so we get negative seven i plus 20 j plus five k. And that's the cross product of b cross, the cross product b cross a. Um, all that's left is to validate. So putting it back in component form, it's negative seven, 20, and five. Um, and so if you remember the geometry of all this, the uh, cross product of the two vectors should uh, form, it should be perpendicular to the plane. It's the normal vector of the plane formed by these two vectors. So they form kind of a right-handed or a, a, a set of coordinate, <laughs> let's see, they form, and the cross product of B with A should be perpendicular to B and A. That's what I mean to say, sorry. Um, and we know that orthogonal or perpendicular vectors have a dot product of zero. So we can take the dot product of this cross product vector with each of the original vectors and we should get zero. Um, and that will catch everything unless we mixed up the order um, because A cross B would also have this property, right? Um, and so uh, we'll check that with the right-hand rule and the graph next. So we're going to do B cross A and dot that with B. So B was 0, negative 1, 4. So doing the dot product, we just multiply the components. So negative seven times zero plus 20 times negative one plus five times four. And that's gonna be zero minus 20 plus 20, which is zero. So you want these to be zero. Um, and now we'll do the dot product of B cross A with A. A was five to negative one. So negative seven times five, 20 times two, and five times negative one. That's negative 35 and 40 and negative five is also zero. So all that checks out. All right. And uh, we can now go to algebra and basically just put in these vectors, uh, make sure it all looks right. So we'll put in A first, one, negative two, negative one, and then B, zero, negative one, four. And then let's change the colors. Okay. 
So we've got our two vectors there. And now we'll put in the cross product vector that we found, uh, which I'll call BXA. Oh, <laughs> looks like BXA will automatically calculate the cross product for you. Look at that. Um, and what it ends up doing there is kind of creating a, a line of where this exists. Yeah, so that's an infinite line. Uh, depending on if you're using the right hand rule or that. So yeah, maybe that's not what we want. Um, so we'll just call it BA. And we're going to put in the components we got in step five. So negative seven, 20, and five. And so what we're looking for here is that um, this sort of follows the right-hand rule. So if you take your right hand and you point your fingers in the direction of the first vector, which is B, uh, so you got to imagine that. Well, I guess this will work. So got my fingers pointed kind of up um, with my right hand with that purple vector B, and then you curl them in the direction of the other vector, which is kind of coming out of the screen. Um, the orange vector A, uh, then your thumb should point in the direction of the cross product vector, um, which is to the right, uh, which is what you see there. You're also kind of looking that it's just at a right angle, so you can kind of make those flat. You can see that if if B and A formed a plane and that was the, like the horizontal, um, then this would be pointed up in the vertical. And then again, you can get rid of this plane if that's getting in the way. You can even get rid of these axes if you don't like those. So, so that looks like a nice right-handed triple. Uh, again, the B and A aren't supposed to be at right angles. So it doesn't look exactly like that, but it looks pretty good. All right, that should do it for calculating the cross product. Uh, move on to the fill-in-the-blanks-in-your-turn examples.